Hello again. If you've, if you've made it this far, if you've made it to week eight, then that means you're ready for the final exam. That means that by now you have turned in your term project last week. You are um, receiving uh, feedback on your term project from members of the class, and you'll be receiving uh, uh, everyone's usability forms that they filled out. They first come to me, and then I will uh, send them all out to you. Those are all anonymous. And this week, we're also doing our final exam. So week eight uh, is an exciting time because you are finishing up the course. Um, if you have gotten to this time, then I believe that you are prepared for the final exam. And what we're going to be doing uh, is we're going to be working with the files that we used from the midterm, and we're going to build on those just a little bit. And I'm also going to give you an opportunity to get some extra credit on the final exam, too, for those of you who feel like you might need it. So the purpose of this video is I just want to introduce the final exam to you and make sure that, you, that everyone is prepared to be successful on the final exam. So here within the course, within week eight, this is the activities page within week eight. The first thing you see up here at the top is your readings for this week. Um, I'm having us read uh, a blog post from the 99%, which is basically a blog that encourages creativity amongst web designers and graphic designers and the like. And then one last plug for the Linda resources, I would suggest going back and, and viewing the last chapter within Web Design Fundamentals uh, by James Williamson. Um, the, there, it's kind of weird to see something that's called getting started here within week eight because you're thinking, uh, why would I be wanting to get started? But essentially what this is, is like I was saying earlier, this uh, encourages you to uh, understand how to actually get started within the field. Um, scroll down, then we see um, this week we do have an extra credit uh, opportunity if you would like to do one final good, bad, and the ugly. You're talking about privacy and um, uh, disclaimers on websites. I will give you extra credit if you do that. And then, of course, we have our extra credit discussion posting. Down here at the bottom, we have our usability assignment. And what you're doing is you're downloading this uh, form and you're using it uh, to review everybody's websites. And you're going to save all of those files with a descriptive name so that I can easily disseminate those all to the students within the class at the end of the course. And then I would also am petitioning for course feedback, kind of similar to how each week in weeks three and week six, I asked you to kind of give me an update on your learning. Now I would like you to give me an update on just your experiences within the course. And that'll come directly to me. And last thing you find here is the final exam. Nothing to dread. Uh, I'm going to walk you through everything that you need to do. But basically what's happened is Webster University is coming to your design firm once again. They're pursuing you to have a complete to complete another project. They loved your project that you did for your midterm, and now what they'd like you to do is add three pages to that uh, to that project. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using the root folder that you're going to be downloading here. You're going to be using that root folder to create just a very simple site. It is going to have three pages, and the three pages are going to be coming from this website here. So you're going to go to library Webster at edu, and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be creating um, basically uh, these pages. So you're going to be creating a page for, well first thing you want to do is you need to have uh, a new section added to your list at the top of the page uh, that we used last time. You're going to be adding a list, uh, a, 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 within that list you're going to be adding this item that's going to jump the users to this point of the page where you're going to be talking about the historical Webster University buildings. And then within that list you're going to have links to the three different pages that you're going to be creating. And what Webster is doing is um, they want these new pages to be redesigned. So let's find the Sam Priest page first. So you go into the Sam Priest page, and so your page is going to be looking very similar, but it's going to be using the styles and um, uh, the formatting and the functionality that we have set up previously within the midterm. So you're just going to be taking this content, you're going to be taking this content out of here, and you're going to be using it uh, with, and you're going to be coding it within Notepad++ to have those three different pages. Uh, other things that we need to talk about, uh, and this is what your list is eventually going to look like. Oh, these, I'm sorry, this is actually the breadcrumbs that would navigate the user back to the Webster history page. I would suggest putting these at the top and the bottom of the page. Um, and these are when they're actually on the Webster Hall page, or they're actually on the music building page. Um, in terms of CSS, uh, it says, you know, the styles for these three new pages and the Webster 
history page should be controlled by an external style sheet. Last time when we did it, we used an embedded style sheet. So now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking those styles out of that embedded style and you're going to be putting them into the external style sheet that I already have set up for you. So you're essentially just going to copy and paste those, but then you're going to need to make sure that you add the link to that external style page on all of those pages. And then the last thing that you need to do to make sure that you do is you need to remove the table formatting. You're going to remove the table formatting and I have instructions below that are going to show you how to set up the whole page within a div. And there's one extra rule that you are going to have to write within your external style sheet to make sure that that div will be a centered one column div, essentially. Um, here's your instructions. You're going to be downloading the zip folder and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. And then these are my suggestions you know, to help you get started. You're going to use Notepad++ to open up your Webster history, open up the template. You're going to remove the embedded styles like I talked about earlier, and then you're going to add the link, which is going to be, I would suggest, being include, that'll, direct the, the, that'll direct the server to go into that include directory to open up the main CSS. And the main things that you then you need to do is you need to remove the, the, the formatting from the Webster history page the table formatting and so I tell you exactly what you need to remove and you need to place all of that in within a div and then uh, you are within on your external style sheet you're gonna have to add this rule after you change the table right now it says table you're gonna change it to being container and then uh, and then once you get all of that set up then what you can do is you can use that page as a template to then build your Sam Priest page and build your other pages within your um, site, the music building and Webster Hall. And then I just walk you through how to build in all of that content and how to get it set up. Make sure that you validate your pages and send me uh, perhaps a PDF or a screenshot of the pages being validated. I'm going to go and check it as well. But I just want to force you to go through that validation process. And then make sure you zip all of everything um, within the Webster Histories folder and make sure you put your last name in it and um, then the last thing that you do have to do is you need to upload all of this to LabWeb so I just basically need to assess you on your ability to upload to LabWeb so right now on LabWebs you probably only have your term project um, but now you need to create a new directory uh, that will be for your final exam so within your co-op 2000 directory that you have because eventually you're going to have other courses that we use LabWebs as well Within your co-op directory, you have your term project, but then now you also need to have a new directory called final exam. Make sure you're not putting spaces here and or using capital letters, just as an FYI. If you have to, I have students every single term that always FTP use their zip folder to LabWeb. So all that is is just putting your zip folder up there. Users can't browse your web, your your final exam from your zip folder. You need to have it. You know that's why we use F, the FTP program to actually put your site, put all of your pages that users can view. Up on um, up on LabWebs, and then you're also so aside from giving me that zip file for me to view the files, you're also going to send me a link that gives me uh, your username will be here, not SpongeBob. Your username will be there. Your 2000 directory, and then final exam, and then the f the page that you should at least send me first would just be the Webster history page, and I am giving you an option for extra credit for each page that you add to your list. Remember that original list that we built up here? This list. For each page that you add, it's up to you to choose. So you can choose which ones you want to do from here. You can choose which ones you want to do. Um, for each page that you add, you get an extra five points. And that'll be an extra five points added to your final exam. There's a maximum number of extra credit pages. You can only do an extra three more. So I'm only able to give you an extra 15 points. So by the time you get these 15 points, perhaps if you uh, do the extra credit discussion posting, that'd be another five. That'd be another five points. Oh, no, actually, this, I think I have that set up as 10 points. So, anyways, by the time you get all this extra credit, I hope that can perhaps push you over to the letter grade that you're looking for. Um, now let's take a look at. I'm going to download these files, just open them up to make sure that everyone understands exactly what's inside them. So I'm going to download the, the root file, and I'm going to save it to my desktop. And I'm going to click Save. Now that I have this on my desktop, I can um, open with WinZip, or you can use whatever folder that you would like to, and then you're going to extract. Extract it to here, it takes a second. 
Now here within our root folder, we have we have an images directory and include directory within the include directory. That's where the main CSS is going to be. We open this up in Notepad++. You notice that the file is empty because that's where your styles are going to go. And then within our images folder, we have our images that we used previously. But I've also gone ahead and provided you the Sam Priest image, the image for the Thompson House, and the image for Webster Hall. If you're going to be doing the extra credit, you're going to have to gather those images from there and put those in here within the images folder. And then um, here is our original page. So let me let's open let's open it with Firefox. So here's our original page. Let me zoom out. And this is what uh, the client. This is this isn't your term project that you submitted last time, but this is something similar. Um, this, so this is what the file that you're going to be working on. This is what the client is expecting. This is all built within a table. Um, and now what we need to do is we need to open this up in Notepad++. Let me show you that. So open with Notepad++. So here is our embedded styles. And that's going to be a table. Remember we talked about we're going to be switching that to container and then we're going to be adding in that extra rule. Now you're not doing that here as an embedded style. You're going to be doing that once you have it um, with on your external style sheet. And then all of this is going to be replaced with just your link to your external style sheet. And you come down here to the bottom and you'll see here how we have it set up to where this is in the table. So this is going to have to be removed. And then you're going to, once this is removed, you're going to have to set up your div. If you remove it now and just put your div and don't stylize your div, you don't tell your div to do anything. So that styles that you have set up and then you have it set up as a container, you're going to have to add that class down here so it'll be div container class basically. And then here, you're going to remember, we're going to be adding in right here, this is where we're going to be adding in our extra option on our list for the historical Webster buildings. And all that's going to do is that's going to jump the user down here to the bottom where we have a list where we're going to have our new information for the historical Webster buildings will be down here. The new information for the historical Webster buildings will be down here at the bottom. So you'll have a new you'll have a new H2 similar to this. You won't have a photo, you're just going to have some sort of and I would suggest introducing it so you're not just going to give them this H2 and then just have your list. You're going to say, "Now let's take a look at some historical Webster buildings or what have you." So and then you're going to have your three buildings, or perhaps six if you're doing the extra credit. And then you need to make sure that you also have a final two top link that would jump the users to the top of the page. Um, so you're going to be adding in down here. Depends on how you want to set all this up, but then you're going to write historical Webster buildings. So that just all that did was that just gave us that extra item on our list. I'm going to save that. Now I don't have this set up because I don't have that anchor set up yet, but eventually that's going to be jumping our user down here to the bottom where we're going to have that extra list for the historical Webster buildings. And all the, and don't forget about the breadcrumbs, we talked about that. On all of your new pages you need to make sure that you have those breadcrumbs that will navigate the user back to this page because we don't want the user to think that they have to use the back button. We want to make everything simple for them. Remember the user's experience should always be effortless, so we need them to be able to get back to that Webster history page. And so this would actually be linked, the Webster history page. This wouldn't be linked because this is the page that they're already on. They're on the Sam Priest page, but we would want to have them have a link that would jump them back to the Webster history page. So um, let me know if you have any questions about the final exam. It's pretty straightforward. I've given you down here at the bottom just like it tells you specifically on how to change everything and do everything. And if you have any troubles validating or anything like that, let me know. Let me know if you have any trouble about lab webs. Um, Please ask me those questions in the general questions area so the whole class can see my response so they can learn from it as well. Um, so I hope you have a good final week. 
uh, finishing things up, doing the usability and doing your final exam. And like always, let the class right know if you have any questions. Have a good day.